music chat. That's ZM Chat on Twitter. And now we are uh, twang out on Google Plus. Oh, and I can see my face. So excited to be here this evening. I have got a really great uh, uh, band that I, I've just totally discovered recently, and I can't get enough of them. Also, to keep us behaving is Mama Brett, Brett McCallion. <laughs> and um, I, I would like normally I was thinking about this because I'll introduce somebody and I think I would turn around and you guys are going to say the same stuff. So what would you want people to know about you out of the gate as an introduction? Well, we... Uh, Your name? Yeah, well, I, I'm Neil. I play drums <laughs> with the Cadillac Black. Um, and this is hey, Kelly. <laughs> um, and he plays lap steel, the uh, coolest lap steel that anybody's ever heard. And... Um, we're born and raised here in Nashville, and uh, we like to drink beer, and, all kinds of beer, uh, and hang all, out all, all with kinds of beer. Nothing, nothing in particular. <laughs> Is it just you make it in the bathtub or something like that? Uh, you know, you never know, really. You know, we're down, <laughs> sa we're down south. You're, we're liable to do anything. You know. <laughs> I hear that. So you guys all in Nashville for grown up, you know, raised. And how did you end up be or coming together, the three of you? Because I, from when I read, you were all individual music careers and writing. And then, how did you guys come together? Yeah, well, we all met in in high school. Um, Jaron and Kelby both went to the same high school, and I was playing in a band with uh, an old friend of ours that uh, kind of a sister high school. We all we I mean we all grew you know we met each other when we were fifteen, sixteen. But they uh, you know they went the my buddy went to the same school as them, and so that's how I met Jaron and Kelby. Um, oh, I read that wrong then, because I thought you all had different careers and then came together, but you've never not been together. Well, yeah. we've, 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 been in, we've been in bands that have played together since we were kids, and then right. it was about eight years ago we started uh, Bang Bang Bang, which became American Bang, which uh, was the band that we toured with until a couple years ago, and then... Our good buddy Ben, that I was just talking about, he uh, he had a baby, and so he had to drop out and go be a family man. And um, so we started that happened when we started the Black. Yeah. Black. You, so. And I guess really quickly, I forgot to explain this that Jaron's not here tonight, and I um I'll let the guys explain to you why Jaron's not here, but um they're they're a trio. Yeah, so it's the, it's the three of us, and Jaron's our lead singer. He uh, would have been here tonight, but about three hours ago his kitchen caught on fire and completely burned down um, and so everybody's fine as he got his dogs out everything's fine but his house is basically being shut down and there's fire trucks there right now and he we were going to do the chat actually from his studio but he uh, that happened and so now he's dealing with that and we are here at my house hanging out so beer. And you've got a guitar behind you and the bang, bang, bang sign behind you, so it all explains yeah. everything. <laughs> yeah. I'm playing it right now. You just can't hear it. It's yeah. so far away. It sounds <laughs> great. So the, totally the mom in me is already wanting to ask a question, if I can, really quickly, about how you guys got involved in music as kids. Were your yeah. parents in music? Um, Jaron's dad... Um, grew up, or I mean, when Jaron was growing up, his dad was uh, a house drummer at the Grand Ole Opry. So Jaron grew up literally going to the Opry every weekend and seeing, you know, Garth Brooks and all those guys playing when they were coming up and stuff. So um, it's Jaron's kind of always been surrounded by the music thing. Uh, my dad moved here to Nashville from Illinois in the '70s. Want you know, he was a songwriter and he had a band here in the '70s and. 80s and his con you know, continues to write songs, but it's not what he does professionally. And then Kelby's just but, somehow yeah. magically knows how to play everything. Yeah, I mean, both my parents, both my <laughs> both my parents love music, and you know, my dad would sing in the car, taking me to school, growing up. And my mom lo loved, you know, old classic rock, and my dad loved old country stuff. So I grew up on a lot of Hank and a lot of, you know, classic rock kind of when I was, you know, coming up, you know, on the radio and that stuff too. So kind of a little bit of everything. And then uh, in my teenage years, I found. Metallica and Fish, so I'm 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 total weirdo in all kinds. Of, <laughs> all You're kinds all of over. Place, all yeah, over the place, so. you've got a good uh, music history. Now, did you guys? So you learned how to play. You sort of taught yourselves, or did you guys take lessons? I'm sorry, this oh. is like the mom who has kids wanting to know. <laughs> uh, well, that's well, I mean that's opposite. But our answers will be opposite on this one too. Yeah, <laughs> I, I didn't take lessons growing up on drums. Um, 
I was the first instrument I got was a guitar, and I didn't understand it. I didn't get it, and so <laughs> my mom somehow realized. I kept saying that I wanted drums, but she didn't really seem to pay much attention to that. And then all of a sudden, one day I came home from school, like I was eleven, and there was a drum set in the attic that somebody had given her, one of her friends. And from that point forward, like for the next seven years until I graduated from high school, I just banged on the drums for funny, that kind three of or four hours drums. a day <laughs> after school, and I feel really bad for my mom and my sister for that, but they were awesome. They were awesome with it. I don't know, I don't, I don't know what's worse, drums or like trumpet or yeah. something. Well, my sister, my sister played violin. I, I'm going to go ahead and say that that was worse. <laughs> we got our daughter a set of drums that has the um, headphones, so we don't have to listen to it as loud. Uh, yeah, that's genius. That's, genius. <laughs> that's a way smarter idea. That was our solution. So now you guys toured. You just toured with ZZ Top and Leonard Skinner, and that was huge, right? And your music's on Nashville. And I mean, what's going on? You guys are just blown no, up. They're actually wait. That we'll have to come back to that. But the Nashville, they're going to be on Nashville. Tour. Oh, okay. But we'll come. We'll come back to that. Talk yeah. about the other stuff. Yeah, I mean, we've been really lucky. We've uh, you know, the ZZ and Leonard Skinner, um, Dirk Bentley, Eric Church, all these guys have taken us out this year, and. Um, you know, we, we've known the ZZ and the Skinner guys for a number of years now because we used to tour with them with our old band, too. And, um, you know, I they've, they've just been great, man. I mean, being able to go out and play with bands that have been around that long and, you know, have the kind of careers that they have, you, it's kind of invaluable, all the stuff that you can learn from that. Yeah. Um, a lot of fun. You know, yeah. but... Uh, you know, we just got off the Leonard Skinner cruise a couple of weeks ago. That was and that wasn't any fun at all. No, no, no. at all. <laughs> it's like three thousand, three thousand rednecks on a boat in the middle of the ocean, and it's just a complete mess. A lot did, of did, beer, huh? Did you hear a lot of the um, when they say, "Here, hold my beer and watch this"? Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of that, but the best part, <laughs> the best part about playing with Skinner is that nobody yells "freebird" at you when you're on stage. <laughs> oh. That's awesome. <laughs> Good point. So now back to Britt, what it said, the Nashville question. Um, you guys are going to be on an episode of ABC's show Nashville tomorrow? Yeah, it's tomorrow night. Um, <gasps> Yay. It'll be, uh, yeah, we taped it um, maybe like a month or about six weeks ago or something um, downtown here in Nashville at uh, Layla's on Broadway. And, um, you know, it was, yeah, we've done one other TV thing before. This one was, uh, this one was a little more, um, there was just more to it, like more kind of acting and just kind of a lot more close-up shots. It was day. a long day, but, um, I mean, we were there for like 16 hours or something. Yeah. But it was, day. you know, it was a lot yeah, of fun. Well, you, um, Jaren, uh, Jaren actually, uh, kind of at the last minute, there's this scene where, um, well, I don't want to give anything away. It's just, you know, but, uh, <laughs> where uh, we're up on stage, and one of the characters, Claire, uh, the Australian girl in the show, she gets up on stage and sings "Ring of Fire" with us, uh, the Johnny Cash song, and um, and to, they couldn't figure out like how to get Jaren or how to get her on stage, right? So they and jump so, up there awkward. So yeah, so they ended up like kind of at the last minute throwing Jaren a line, so Jaren actually gets a line in the show, which. It was kind of it was completely spontaneous and so we had to do it. It was yeah. just kind of funny because we're, we're not actors. We're barely we're, we're nothing in music. Everybody's eyes are on him. He's the he's the, he's the, for like two but, seconds. He's the actor in the, in the show. But you guys are actually singing, it's your voice, right? Yeah. And so oh, we, okay. we do a couple of our songs, um, and then as the last scene we're doing it cuts to us like doing this Johnny Cash song and but it's it's her singing it. Um, right, she jumps up, and you know, it. and so she gets up there and she sings. So it'll be interesting to see because I have no idea what it's going to look like. <laughs> well, this isn't you guys. I was reading in your bio that you've done a lot of TV stuff, but this will be your first, like, um, actually on air. But you've written songs for. I mean, you could probably tell me more, but I know like CW, uh, the Vampire Show, and yeah, Utah. Vampire Diaries. But yeah, we've been really lucky with that stuff. It's just, um, how do, I don't know. How, what, what it is, but it's just um, something about anytime somebody needs a uh, a song that fits like a bar scene or something like that. Like it seems that we always get to be that band. Um, <laughs> so we've been really lucky in that regard. Yeah, like Vampire Diaries and um, House, that show on Fox, and um, Baseball Wives. I didn't know that was a TV show, but apparently that's a TV show. And I don't basketball, know, 
Basketball wives? Or, or is baseball. that a new one? I think it's no, baseball wives. It's, it's on VH1. Yeah. Yeah. It's on <laughs> VH1. Yeah, they have a lot of them. Yeah. How, how did you get, like, because I know that that's kind of a tough thing to break into is working the music on TV shows. I know that's a really good gig to get into, though. How did you, how'd that happen? Just luck? Um, or talent? We've got... Uh, I, we've got a we've got a lot of friends uh, that just you know that we've met throughout the years that you know their jobs bounce around and whatnot. We've just been kind of lucky that a decent amount of them now are these people that do the film and TV like supervising and are picking songs for shows. And so you know every once in a while you know we'll be talking to one of them and they'll be like, oh you know what I've got this thing and it might be great for to use one of your tunes. Can you send me whatever your new stuff is? You know and so. Yep. We'll shoot some stuff over to them, and sometimes it makes sense for what they're trying to do. So we've just been we've been lucky, and it's a great opportunity, you know, as far as and it's pretty convenient exposure. being in this town, you know. I mean, we're right here, and we just kind of got lucky because we were all we all grew up here, and ended up playing music, and ended up being here, and getting to meet the people like that that you get to meet doing it, you know. So that's what's I call like TV scores. There's a name for that because I was trying to tweet about what we were talking about. To, to our followers, but what it, what do you call that? It's yeah, I mean, I would say you know, it's like film and TV syncs, you know. Um, Syn oh, syncs! Oh, I love that word. Call it. <laughs> it, Brett, I know you have a question. Go, baby. Go, Bob. Go, Brett. <laughs> I Go, keep Brett. muting myself. I have so many questions, I can't even tell you. But I have one that's kind of an interesting one about group dynamics. Cool. Yeah, go so, for it. Ooh, this will be good. <laughs> this will be great because you only have two out of the three of us, so it's even better. Yeah, so I was the troublemaker. Uh, that would be Kelby. Yeah, it's probably, <laughs> I'd probably have to. I'd probably have to vote myself. Kelby's Kelby's kind of the wild card. Yeah, the wild card. If, if, if there were going to be one, Kelby <laughs> Kelby sometimes is in like super uh, super party, good mood, and ready to go, and you can't stop him, and you can't find him, <laughs> and you can't find him, and then sometimes Kelby's like. If we don't get out of here and I don't get to the hotel, it gets I'm going to kill all the <laughs> No. All right. So tell us, you know, I know you guys have plenty of stories. Are there any good stories that came out of this recent tour or this recent gig that you guys are playing? With ZZ Top and Leonard Skinner, anything cool? Um, you know, I was thinking the other day, I was thinking about this, uh, like, it was a couple months ago, but we were out with ZZ Top and we were playing in the middle of nowhere in Kansas. And, um, and I was remembering Billy Gibbons is a singer for ZZ Top, you know, and he's an amazing guy, and, you know, he's, you know, it's so cool to even be able to say that you know him, but, uh, you know, he was wandering, he always, he wanders around in his pajamas backstage, you know, and, like, that's just <laughs> what he does, and, and really so he does. came up, he came up to our dressing room one night before a show, and he goes, yeah, I'm, I was just, yeah, I've been thinking about, uh, you know, uh, you guys, you guys need some pocket knives, and he pulls out these three knives that he's bought that day, and they're like these big, awesome, like big Bowie crazy, knives. You know, Bowie <laughs> knives. And he's been like out shopping in Dodge City, Kansas, and he bought knives for us because he thought that we, like, he decided we needed. Them. <laughs> and so we got knives from Billy Gibbons. And what's I, the reason I was thinking about it is because when I come home, sometimes at night, and I'm a little intoxicated. I sometimes I can't get my shoelaces off. So <laughs> you found a use for night. the knife. <laughs> yeah. So the other, so the other night I came home and I was like I cannot get this shoelace off and I opened this drawer and my knife was in there and I just cut my shoelace. <laughs> right off. I was like I'm cutting it with Billy Gibbons' knife. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, that That's sounds it. like a good one. You found a right. use. I mean, I was thinking maybe you cut open the beer cans. Who knows? But so so uh, now. Um, when you guys were filming this Nashville, when you guys were filming this episode, were, was there any moment in time where you thought, I kind of want to do this? Maybe I like to be in front of the camera? Not one no, second. no, no, no. One second. no. <laughs> you know what we felt like? You know, it was funny. You know what we felt like at the end of the day after a 16 hour video shoot? We felt like we had driven 16 hours because that's what we're. I mean, we were exhausted the same way, and we all go, I would have rather driven 16 hours than done it. Yeah, oh, the God. End, the end, it product, really was. The end product of it, it'll be great. It'll be know? great. It'll be awesome. But it's totally but, worth doing, but man, it's the actual doing it. that stuff, yeah, the actual doing it is, I can't, I can't imagine that being my day job. Right. No. 
<laughs> so that's your, so that's a big no. That's a double no. I, I'll, I'll uh, speak, we'll speak for Jaren on that one too. That's a triple no. <laughs> uh, no. We have a couple of questions coming in from Twitter, so I'll start with going back. And and this is actually something Brett and I asked. How did you come up with the name, the Cadillac Black? By the way, if you're watching this and you're looking for them on Twitter, it's at the Cadillac, and Black is spelled B L A K, and that's because Twitter limits the characters you can use. But how did you come up with the name? We um we had a number of drunken nights talking about <laughs> we we really don't like. Uh, naming bands. It's like kind it's of the, the hardest, the hardest thing, thing in the world to do. <laughs> um, and we were having a lot of trouble with this one. Um, but we finally just kind of went, you know what, we like the word Cadillac. We like the word black. It's a little plain. And we don't want it to be a car association necessarily, you know. Um, and so we put the the in front of it because we felt like if it's the Cadillac black, it's kind of like the color. Yeah. It's kind of like a it's more of a vibe. It's more of a vibe kind of yeah. thing. And so... Know? That was kind of, it was a, a number of just like playing around. I was like, oh, Black Cadillac, the Cadillac Black, this, that, and the other. And it just kind of landed on that. Um, and as soon as we said it and said, okay, none of us hate this, we just ran with it. Yeah. I never thought twice about it because. You're not going to like it. You just have to all agree to not hate it. And they're like, okay, well, it'll take on its own form as it goes. You know? It's it's brilliant. It, it's it's yeah. fantastic. Um, I love the fact, too, somebody, they, they're calling you TCB. That's what like someone else just called you TCB and yeah, another, I, think that, I, I think that happened by accident too. I think we thought about it after the fact and we we're like, oh wait, TCB too. Yeah, okay, well definitely, yeah, that's the best band name right there. Let's go. <laughs> I, I like the the cartoon somebody made of you and the, with the TCB on the drums. That it's yeah. on all. I found it on a few different places. Um, next yeah. question is coming from oh, Tammy Ragusa from Country Weekly says, oh, I wish I could be there. But um, where did that question go? Oh, a guy said. Man, we got I got a bunch of tweets coming through and I can't find it. He said when you're you guys party a lot and being out there, is it hard does that come off across as like a weird reputation? And I want to say not in Nashville, but he asked partying and stuff, does that limit the way you're taking in Nashville? I don't um, think so. I mean I think I you know, we, get his question. We uh I mean as far as as far as us in Nashville I would venture to say I could be wrong, but that people, the perception of us more than anything is that we work really hard. Um, I could be totally wrong about that, but yeah. no, we all spend, I mean, we're all still doing it. We've been we all it. spend a lot of time. I mean, every day when we're home, we're songwriting. It was, oh, it looks um, like David Watts. Is that a friend of yours? He was being, he was probably being. Oh, friendly. David. Thanks, David. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thanks, thanks, buddy. Oh, I get it. You know what? He was being Tell, a friend. Tell, tell, tell him that I didn't answer his question yesterday for a reason. Were you, just, he tell was him being, that. just tell him that. Were you being snark? <laughs> he was being sarcastic. Okay, that's why I didn't get it because I thought he said, uh, "Do you think your party image prevents you from being taken seriously <laughs> by some music industry types in Nashville?" But Neil now was, I, was, hey, well, Neil was that you cut Neil off though. Neil was answering the question. I had a really, <laughs> I had a really good answer prepared for that one. <laughs> well, when you see David next time, Tom, for doing that to me, that just kick him in the balls. Uh, Oh, well, oh, for sure. You got to come in, bud. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was funny. There's more questions, but I like Britt's questions tonight. <laughs> well, <laughs> I have one more well, question. Shoot, you said you, said you had a million. To, <laughs> other people want to know about, like, what kind of food that you eat and stuff like that. But what I want to know is who your favorite musicians are. Who inspires you guys? Um, I grew up on Tom Petty and Neil Young and stuff like that. Like, I was my namesake, actually, Neil Young. Uh, there you go. Um, from my parents, so... But um, I, you know, Tom Petty's kind of tried and true, and he's lasted. You know, it's like I can put on a record that I heard when I was a kid, and I still feel the exact same way when I hear it now. It's like the songs stand up, um, you know. And I feel that way with Neil Young and some of these other guys. You know, um, I know Jaron would say that his first two cassette tapes were Metallica and Justice for All and Skinner's Greatest Hits, which is actually true. <laughs> and um, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and Ashley and Ashley Wilcox and hi Ashley. Yeah. Um, hey girl. <laughs> sorry, that's my friend. Um, <laughs> Ooh, yeah, he's single. I, I I told everybody on Twitter. I know. I did too. Cool. I was like, these guys are single. Well, well, I noticed after I said that, like we had like twenty new people popped on. <laughs> you, you know that's oh, yeah. how you know that's how Randy Hauser met his wife was on Twitter. Were they right? Were they all guys? <laughs> I hope. <laughs> That's a good point. 
But no, yeah, Twitter's I mean, a good place to meet women. There's more oh, yeah. women on Twitter than anyone. <laughs> Apparently, I see both of you right now. I mean, I, you know, we just met. I mean, that's, you know. All right, so how about you? What are your, it's Kelby, right? How, uh, yeah, what Kelby, are your musical yeah. kind of favorites? I mean, uh, all, all over the place, really. I mean, I, I grew up, when I, when I was little, I grew up on 80s country. Like, pretty much Hank Jr., Waylon, I mean, Alabama, all that stuff. That's until I was, you know, like I was saying, when I started like, going to school, like my parents take me to school and I listen to a lot of classic rock and stuff. But then high school and beyond, I mean, I, you know, I love everything from jazz to bluegrass to metal to country to, I mean, all over the place. I mean, Alison Krauss is one of my favorites. It depends on the day, really. You know, it depends so are on the we gonna be depends happy, on day. Are we going to be hearing any heavy metal tunes from you guys at any point in time? Well, I mean, if you come see the show, you see, you see the end of our set. You know, we tease a little Metallica at the end. So, I mean, yeah. that, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Yay. Oh, uh, David Watts is back, and he says, I, he must be. <laughs> next, you know what, y'all? He's I get back, up, man. I'll be back to Nashville soon, and I'm going to totally, you're getting it, David Watts. He says, would you call Dirk Spentley a friend, or is it pure business? And I actually wanted to know that, too. So you get one. We actually don't, we actually don't know him at all. It's weird. We keep t saying all this stuff about him. We have never met him before. You haven't <laughs> met Dirk But you just were, i seen all these pictures of you guys together. Dirk uh, I mean, I that was my attempt at being funny. I'm sorry. I can't. Oh. oh. <laughs> I, would say uh, I, really, I really got it with that one, <laughs> you did get me because I was hey, like, "Wow, hey, that's crazy!" Here. Like I've met Dirks and he's so friendly, and I thought, "How is he so literal all the time?" Jeez. Okay. Well, no, I was tr I was thinking about that because like I worked in radio before this, and I'm like, I met Dirks quite a few times. He's just so friendly, and he's yeah, like, he's, he's he's one of the nicest guys I've ever met in country music. Period. Probably yep. the probably the nicest guy. He's I agree. Guy. He's the yeah. kind of guy that I mean, he literally like recently Jaron was moving into the house that just burned down um, and just the kitchen though it's okay kitchen. everything's okay everything's okay just the everything's just the okay kind of just but, <laughs> kind of but, it's weird. no but I mean he it was like a random day and he called me and it was like we were home for like two days and he was trying to move and he called me and he called a few of our other friends and like we were all busy doing whatever we were doing um, and then he called, so he called Dirks and was like, hey, Dirks, can I borrow your truck? And Dirks was like, what are you doing? And he's like, I'm moving. And so Dirks just came over, brought his truck, and helped Jeremy. <laughs> he's like, well, I'm not doing anything this morning. I'll come over there. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. See, that's, that's a good friend. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, just cool, dude. You guys, this is really cool because I don't see this a lot. This is, how many, this is your second or this is your sophomore album? Or this your first? Our first. first. Mm -hmm. This is the first, okay, the Cadillac back because it's said. You. This is the debut album, but you guys have done so much stuff besides this together. But all eleven songs you guys penned and wrote everything on here. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. And I like this, and you can explain it more. Um, I like the this is your unique three piece configuration happened organically. Yeah, and no, it, it was. It talk came about that. From, yeah, sorry. Um, it came from um, basically we were a four piece band before this, a different band, the American Bank thing, and. We, like we were saying in the beginning, we all grew up together, and known each other for forever, and so the idea of replacing one of our best friends with somebody that we didn't know as well and that hadn't been on the road, yes, had all the same experiences with us, just didn't really feel. Even if it was right. a friend we'd known for a little while, but didn't. I mean, we all went to we all known each other since we were teenagers, you know. You know. Like, so I think it, it it kind of became a matter of necessity. Okay, well, how do we? make a sound that feels very natural to us as the three of us and so you know we were trying to figure out a way to get Kelby back to playing guitar because that was his original instrument we couldn't quite get him there we got him back to six strings <laughs> on a lap steel and so we, what Kelby's deal is is he runs his lap steel through a guitar amp and a bass amp and he's got this kind of crazy pedal board with two volume pedals and kind of looks like he's flying an airplane swimming um, <laughs> So, you know, Kelby kind of makes the thing go in a unique way. You know, I mean, you know, I played bass, you know, with Neil as a rhythm section for five years. So going from that to kind of going and doing a mix between that and guitar at the same time, it just, it's really solid, you know, and it just kind of, it just kind of worked. And Jaren's, Jaren's a great guitar player and he's, you know, he rips some cool solos and he does his thing and he sings his ass off and it just works, you know. Awesome. So I know. I was just going to say, so how long before you guys come out with another album? Are you just going to keep pumping them out, or what? Yeah, we've, we've got a lot of tunes already for another record. We're, um, 
you know, we're, months, we're, probably. Yeah, we were, we were going to go in here this month and record, but we've got too many shows and stuff, so we're uh, it'll be sometime early in the next year before we get back in. But yeah, we've got we've been working this "Get Your Buzz On" song off the record on like down in Texas uh, radio uh-huh. down there, and so we've been running around there in Oklahoma and Arkansas a lot, and uh, so we continue to do that there. earlier next year. Yeah. We have a new tweet. Let's see who it is. Hey. What? Paige Love Gregory loves Metallica yeah. and loves TCB. <laughs> Come on. Hello, Paige. <laughs> no, and uh, Paige is cute. I think Paige is single. Single. Tell us if you're single or not. She's a hardworking country girl. Um, I like this one. Paragon Media wants to know, what inspires TCB when writing their music? Um, beer, whiskey, and women. That's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> and this one's That's funny. exactly the answer to that. <laughs> and in that order. I love your whole team and all yeah, your whatever, friends. Whatever order makes sense at the time. <laughs> your your management company, I love this because they're the first management company that I've seen come to a chat. They said, on a scale of 1 to 11, how amazing is your new management team? Um, you know, which 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 way is it depends on who's asking. Which who's way is asking? up? Oh. It's <laughs> amb- ambiance artist. You're, is that, <laughs> I was just wondering which manager over there was asking. Oh, hey, which which manager is this, buddy? <laughs> He's got his buzz on too, whoever it is. Cool. It, I bet it's Ricky. And we like Ricky. He's a good one. He's good. Yeah, he, uh, you should you should you guys should all check out his rap group, Southbound. Oh, come on, man. Look it up on YouTube. It's special. <laughs> <laughs> what a jammer. What a jammer. That's so oh funny. Man, that's hilarious. Uh oh. Here we uh, go. Yes. Yeah, they're, they're cool. They're cool. They're cool peeps. That's right. So that's a new thing. So having a manager, having a publicist, having this whole team, and um, what label are you? Are you on a self label or are you? We are. Yeah, we're on a self label. So it's been really fun for us this last uh, couple of years because since we got out of the old band, we, you know, we started our own label. It's called Nobody Buys Records, and um, awesome. we uh, we've got management and a booking agency, and we've got awesome publicist. And uh, yes, you do. We just, uh, you know, it's, we really have enjoyed being able to do it all ourselves, getting to produce this record ourselves and kind of choose what we do and don't want to do and not have to answer anybody. It's been great for us, you know. Um, we've been having a lot of fun with it. I think that's the new, kind of the new, na- the new Nashville way. I like, I like that. Um, what, what's been this year? So, you, I mean, you've had an epic year, obviously. What's been, like, the best thing that's happened and, like, the craziest thing that's happened? Hmm. Uh, something that comes to mind was on the um, <clears throat> the Skinner cruise that we just got off of. Um, Ricky Medlock, one of the lead guitar players that's been in the band since just about the beginning, he came up to us when we were doing some of the shows and uh, with them and ZZ Top back in September. He came up to us and said, "Hey man, uh, on the cruise we're going to do this this like all star jam. I'm going to get people up from Blackberry Smoke and you know this that and the other. And I want you guys to get up there. We're going to jam some songs." And we're like, "Okay, Ricky, yeah, sounds good." Yeah, you know, it kind of hit the brain. <laughs> so we get on the ship, and he's like, he, he he runs me and Neil down. We run into him on the ship, like randomly. He's like, hey, hey, you guys come down here. He's like, hey, we're gonna rehearse tomorrow morning at ten o'clock. We're gonna do Jeff Beck. We're gonna do Blackfoot. We're gonna, he just basically tells us what we're doing, and we're like, uh, all right, well, we'll show up. Well, I ended up having a late night. I barely made it to the rehearsal, but we ended up. It, it was basically most of Skinner, and me and him and Jaron, and bass player from Blackberry Smoke got up there, and we, I mean, we jammed like five or six songs, and it was. It was so cool. It was so cool. It was like the, like the special All Star Jam that only alumni from the other like pre- previous cruises could come see, and everybody was just having a blast. And you know, I'm sitting there playing lap steel in between two Skinner's guitar players, and you know, Neil's playing drums. It was it was super awesome. That was that was really cool. What he <laughs> said. <laughs> and then what's been like something that you're like, oh crap. Uh, the um, band breaking down yeah, a couple band, of times. The <laughs> Um, it's been a shop off and on for the last few weeks. <laughs> but you know what the plus side. side is to it, the van breaking down is instead of us renting another van, we just get a bus because it's awesome. <laughs> nice. What's up with like, what are you guys doing in Nashville? Because I like from Randy's bus to Jer- Jared Newman's bus to Lee Bryce's bus. Like, you, is it just like it just happens because you drive them so much they're going to break? Yeah. You hear oh, all yeah. the stories of those bus start fires. Uh, they're not supposed to travel like we make them travel. Right. Oh. 
so I know I know Britt, did you did you have to get flying? I do, I have to hop off. Thank you guys so much. It You're was awesome. nice to meet you. Nice to Take meet you. care. And tweet I me was, anytime. I was <laughs> gonna oh, ask if anybody wanted to jump in here on the hangout and ask questions face to face. Anyone who has a Google account that wants to jump on here with these guys, hit me up right now and I will send you the link to jump on here. You guys have a little few more minutes, right? Yeah, 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 we're good. All right, okay, you guys, cool. have fun. Take care. Bye, take it easy. Love you, Britt. Love you, bye. Britt was here to make sure we were all behaving. Now it's time for us to get wild and crazy. <laughs> you know, so I think I love this, um, and I totally agree. Mike Eli had a cool, from the Eli Young Band, had a cool quote, and he said, this is the kind of music I listen to because they don't sound like someone else. They sound like the Cadillac Black. Now, if you were going to explain somebody to somebody what you sound like because I was trying to tell Brett what I thought and uh, she's new was new to country music what would you say you sound like well, when we were kind of coming up with the band name and in the studio making the record kind of figuring out the way we wanted to sound we were just kind of goofing off trying to come up with names for stuff and one of the things that we kind of came up with was this country fuzz thing um, and we we said it and we were like you know what that's kind of what this thing as that we're making sounds like it's a little bit country but it's got this alternative kind of edge to it kind of grungy kind of rock thing that we've always been into which I think just kind of comes naturally from what we grew up listening to and being you know we were all we were all teenagers when it was Nirvana and Metallica yes. was really big and all of this kind of stuff and so there's there's a natural influence there from a lot of that stuff um, but at the same time we're from Nashville, and we grew up around country music, love country music, we've always been fans of it, and as it's progressed, I think we've just been really lucky that kind of where we're at and what we're doing right now is not completely far off from some of the other things that are going on in country music. You know? I sort of think that's where, in a lot of ways, like country music is on its way to that Americana sound. Um, I, I'm noticing that because, like, I mean, I love, like, Alice in Chains, and there's some groups, and I saw this band, Whiskey Myers, a yeah, while back, yeah. like, and I, I kind of, like, you guys have a similar vibe, and I love Blackberry Smoke and a lot of the bands, but that sound, like, that, I don't know what, what to call it, but I feel like that's, you remember how, like, rock and roll, there was album-orientated rock, then, like, classic, and then new rock, and this rock, and active adult, country's always just kind of been country. But I see where we're about to break off, don't you? Yeah, I feel like I feel like country is kind of a, a mixture of a lot of different genres right now. There's you know there's very pop oriented country, there's very traditional country, you know. But then there's you know, your Eric Churches and your Brantley Gilberts and stuff like that that are doing kind of a heavier version of country with a little bit of rock and or, you know a little bit of hip hop or all this different stuff that's kind of mixed in, you know, um, and. We're just happy to be making the music that we're making, and if it kind of fits into, you know, what those people are listening to anyway, then that's all the better, you know. But yeah, what was it like when you're oh, you did you tour with Eric, or was it just a few shows with him? Yeah, we did. We did um, a handful shows. Yeah, we did a few at the beginning of this year, at the beginning of this tour that he's been on the Blood, Sweat, and Beers tour. Um, we did the first week or so with him, um, and we did a couple with him last year too. Um, you know, he's. I just feel like he's so ahead of the game as far as the records he's making and kind of his approach on touring and whatnot. It's like he's really good about playing really, you know, strong shows to his fans and being really good to them and just trying to build a core audience that, you know, he's doing great at radio and stuff, but if radio didn't play him at all, he would still have that fan base, you know. I agree. I like that. Kind of the way that Dave Matthews mm -hmm. route that, that one. I think Eric's done a great job at that. Um, so, you, okay, that was Jaron that produced Dirk's EP, The mm -hmm. Cold Country and Cold Cans. Yeah. Okay. And then the, as far as writing songs, you guys, you guys, do you all three sit down and write together or do you give like a, a ritual? When you're writing there's not, there's kind of no rhyme or reason to it, to be honest. Um, I come from different places. Yeah, and so you know this, the record that we've got out right now, um, it kind of, it was a, it was a, it was a different experience for us because it was the first eleven songs we wrote as a band. We just literally, I'm Southern is the first song in the record, and it's the first song that we kind of wrote and went, okay, this is the sound for the band. 
And so from there, we just started filling in the gaps of like, okay, well, what would the next song be on the record? What would this be? You know, and so it's like, I feel like that's why, at least to us, it's a more cohesive thing than anything we've done before is because we we weren't sitting there going, well, we've got 500 songs and which ones are going to be the thing that kind of makes sense for this record. Um, it was just, here's 11 songs. We feel great about these. All right, let's put it out. You know, and that was all there was to it. Interesting. Like, so that's funny because like I, I've been there with someone that are trying to decide the album or orientation and how to go. I, I never until this past year had thought about that when listening to music that somebody thought down and sat down and went, okay, we're going to put that song and then go to this song. Like to me, and then if you changed it, it changes the way you experience the next song. Do you know what I mean? It's oh, like absolutely. if you're if you're all like amped up from the one song and then you die like here and it's like the love song, you're like, no, we can't do it like that in that order. And I never even thought about that till this year, which yeah. was funny. Yeah, no, for sure. You know, and that's a, that's a really fun part about making records is just kind of getting to figure out how you want it to, what kind of story you want to tell with it, you know? Um, and so, you know, that's with this record, we were just, it was, it was easier than most because I guess, cause we didn't have anybody to answer to and we felt, Pretty well. I mean, pretty good about all these records. What a good yeah, plug! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know they're funny. Was so. Uh, did you guys? Do you, do you ever? With uh, when you got when are you guys gonna play in Atlanta? Somebody wants to know. I gotta take Atlanta. When are we right? going to Atlanta? Probably sometime earlier in the year. We haven't been. It's, we've only been on there once or twice. I think this year. So it's about time we come back. Awesome. And I just invited anybody into the hangout if you want. If you go on my link. There's, it says, um, does anyone want to jump on the twang out and it, use the link? And if you click on that, it'll walk you through what to do and you can actually talk live with us. And I'll give that a few minutes for anybody who wants to do that. I know it's like a new technology. So with that said, what do you think? It takes, it takes, it takes a couple of minutes to get used to it. You know, like, what do you, to get to the, like the, the, the chat thing. It yeah, takes, it'll, <laughs> it takes a minute to settle in and be like, oh, okay, yeah, okay, cool. But it's not that bad, like, compared to, I'm not downloaded Ustream or Skype in a long time, but it's pretty quick. Like, and, mm -hmm. and I, I love the fact that when we're done, it's a video on YouTube already. Yeah, and that's cool. you guys, as far as that social media and that uh, guerrilla marketing and getting out to the fans, to the music, what do you, uh, what do you think, like, of all this, and what's your favorite platform so far? You know, I... Personally, like like not band related, I really like Instagram just because I'm okay. not I'm not a really big fan of hearing what everybody thinks all the time. But I do like to see <laughs> what people are doing. Um, so, um, but for the band, I mean, I feel like Facebook and Twitter are the two main ways that we communicate with people. I mean, we've got our website; it's up to date, and I'm sure some people use that for tour dates and whatnot. But I'm on our Facebook and our Twitter every day responding to people on you know their comments and whatnot and you know same as on Twitter and you know it's pretty much a constant you know you kind of wake up and go to sleep thinking okay well is there anything else that we have to address today or tomorrow or whatever so mm -hmm. um, interesting you know I think that we really I think I think it's important to do that you know and keep it kind of something that we do ourselves because I, I like to know what people are thinking and I'm sure that if I was to post on somebody's band page something and I was eager to know something, I wouldn't be very happy if I got some generic response from somebody that wasn't the band. So, Absolutely. <laughs> so I, I don't have any problem just kind of going through that and seeing what's up. One fan at a time. Um, okay, Casey Smith, or Casey, yeah, Casey Smith says, where do you really want to perform? What's your performance goal? Uh, like a place I I get where do you want to perform is one question and then it says performance goal so okay I think yeah. maybe she means venue and then what is your goal in general I mean it, with our old band we, we did the rhyme in here in Nashville once and we haven't gotten to do that yet with this band so I think yeah, that that'd be really getting cool. to a point in Nashville where we were able to do our own headlining show at a place like the rhyme and you know it's the greatest sounding venue and has as much tradition and history as anywhere in the world, um, and the fact that we're from here, it's like I think that would be 
right at the top, you know. I mean, you can sell out an arena and you can do all this other stuff, but there's not really anything as cool as the run. Mm -hmm. the, the, the Opry, have you performed it? We haven't done yeah. the Opry. We haven't done the Grand Old Opry yet. Um, you know, and it'll be interesting to see if that happens and if it does. Well, let's tweet them. Yeah, tell them right now. Let's see, mm -hmm. at Opry, when are you going to have, when are you going to have, I'll tell them right now. There you go. Tell them. And <laughs> <laughs> tell them we're gonna be we're gonna be loud, but we'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> and let's see, where's the next one? You all put okay. So it's it's Mayor says y'all put a kill on a killer show. So glad I had the chance to see you. Won't be so easy with you growing fame. I don't know what that means. Okay, that wasn't a question. I'm sorry. Hey, do you guys have a question you want to ask people and get them to answer? Wait, why don't you ask a question? Mm -hmm. um, nice. Huh? Let's see. Yeah, I'm not good yeah. at asking questions. <laughs> um, where, where are you guys from? <laughs> Where's everybody? Oh, that's what I usually ask. Where are you and what are you wearing? I forgot. That's usually my Monday night question. Where yeah, are you guys go. and what are you wearing? And the guys, if you're single and you're a girl, they want to see pictures. That's true, too. And if, um, let's see, what else? Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll come play a show wherever the most people are from. How about that? There you go. There you go. <laughs> Well, it's probably I. It's Arizona because that's where I'm at. You guys need to come see me in Tucson. <laughs> I love Tucson. Do you? You been here? I have been there. Yeah, we played. Was it the Rialto Theater or something like that? When When was that? Um, it was with our old band, American Bang. But we did. We, actually, it was Easy Top. I know that. I remember that. Um, that yeah, is. So, yeah. Oh, you know what? That is so funny. Now everything's coming back to me. Yeah. Well. <laughs> That was a like that was the end of last year or the year before that. It was a few years ago. They might have been through there since we've been there with them, but we were there probably two thousand seven or eight or something like that. Oh, okay. Well, um, you know, all these years are starting to come together for me. So, and me too. Mm -hmm. Oh, it happens. We got Smithville, Tennessee, and Nice, and Josh from L R. I'm looking Little at Rock. where what's Little, Rock. Little Rock. Okay. I know Josh. What up, Josh? <laughs> what up, dog? It doesn't sound right when I say it, huh? So, as far as like who you performed with, who else would you like to go on tour with and perform with? Tom Petty's an easy one. Yeah, that one's. Mm -hmm. that one's I get. I'm. I'm almost wearing that one out by saying <laughs> so much, but that would be great. Um, you know, I think there's there's probably a few in the country world we haven't done that would be. A lot of fun. I'm trying to think who. Um, Willie Nelson would be a good one. Oh, man. Um, Ooh. That'd, be a, that'd be a blast. We, uh, you know, Kid Rock just came out with his new record. If you're friends with him, tell him we want to open for him. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I will play with anybody. If there's people there, we'll play. <laughs> Okay, now, now, of all of the girls in Nashville, so you've got, there are a lot of, well, no, not a lot, are, none of the Pistol Annies are single anymore. Um, who's it? Katie Arminger, she's single. Like, what, how old are you guys? 19. <laughs> oh, you guys are, you're only 19? 19. You're 19. lying. You're no. lying again. I am lying again. Because <laughs> I was well, like, oh, you better <laughs> be older than, you better at least be 21. Cause yeah, you you're drink, gullible. Either you, I'm a terrible, I'm a terrible liar. You drink beer. Gullible. Well, you drank beer on my show, so you better be 21. <laughs> you get me in trouble. Well, I don't think. <laughs> I don't think you can get any trouble for this. Oh, uh, well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're many states away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't get me arrested for, for twanging out with. Some long hair boys in Nashville. <laughs> no, so so that it, the dating pool for guys, because like I always think like okay, there's no guys, like all of them are gone, but really there's no girls. So that means there's no guys and girls. But is there anybody you have a celeb crush, like a, a celebrity crush, like a? <clears throat> I have, oh, for, currently for sure Katy Perry, huge crush. If she's watching, tweet me. You can find me. <laughs> Mine, it's, it's not that hard. It's it's funny because mine's gonna pop up too. Mine would be Rihanna. So oh, yeah, and yeah. that would be second. We could so we could swap. Though. What <laughs> the southern girls aren't good. Enough. Well, Katie's Katy Perry's isn't she southern sort of? No, she, she's, yeah, I think she lived in Nashville. I, she I, did. Just, I still keep listening to that album. It's just it, I just can't turn it off. It's I awesome. love what a, I know. <laughs> she, fantastic. So, um, 
Okay, well, where do you guys go in Nashville and hang out so that everyone who's watching can go and stalk you? Um, we go to the all the all the venues. You know, we do the Mercy Lounge and the Exit Inn and the basement. Um, okay, you like those places. Hang out. Do those yeah. places just because all our friends are. There's always, usually, there's always a great band. I mean, there's a great band playing in Nashville every night of the week. There's so. not like you're not at like winners and losers in that group that area. Well, oh, not a whole lot. I, yeah, I walk all the time. I walk by. <laughs> I walk by winners last night because our buddies do the whiskey jam down there, and um, Monday nights it was so packed <laughs> that we couldn't get in. So I decided oh. to go to, to Red Door and drink beer. Nice. Oh, I love Red Door. Uh, you know, it's funny about Nashville is like everyone that's touring tourists that go there, they like want to go downtown but that no none of you guys know like they think okay we're gonna go downtown and go to like um whatever bar Tootsies and Roberts yeah and, and we're gonna see them. Tim McGraw and Blake Shell and all these people walking around downtown yeah I mean but, it, I mean it's fine it's fine to go down there on a weekend night sometimes but I mean yeah you're not gonna see any of those people ever <laughs> but it's funny because you you go hit like losers at like you know late at night and they're in the back of the bar you'll see like Trent Tomlinson right. or like Chris right. Young you gotta, you, gotta, you gotta know where to go for sure yeah <laughs> <laughs> I need it someone needs to make one of those like you know in Hollywood where they make the the maps to all the celeb houses. Oh right! Yeah. Make one that's like where all the, the bars in Nashville. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a great idea. That's a great okay, idea. so some more things are coming through, and I liked one of them because, and I don't know if you answered this already, but your first concert you ever went to, I like. I think that came from your management. Well, they just are very inquisitive tonight. Um, my, I know. My, Mine, I, I've already said this two or three times tonight, but uh, Hank Williams Jr. was actually my first concert when I was like five. Okay. Yeah. You got got that ambulance? He stole my hat. <laughs> <laughs> what um, else? What, uh, so what is your go-to drink before or after a show when you get your buzz on? Whiskey. Jack Daniels. Uh, or beer. And or beer. It's usually both. I yeah. tend to have a, a beer in one hand and a Jack Daniels in the other. Yeah. Um, That's a great question, by the way. Yeah, and that's consistent pretty much. Um, it's been yeah, yeah, whiskey, years since whiskey, whiskey and or beer. Switch that up. Yeah. Awesome. For sure. Uh, by the way, it's Ricky and Carlos are who were so it. taking two of them to tweet. No wonder the tweets are so good. They're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love them. I love you, Ricky and Carlos. Oh, way Ricky, to go, guys. Ricky, you're, Ricky's asking the questions and Carlos is typing for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tell you guys follow me. Come on. They're, they're not following oh, me. It's okay man. though. I won't. I won't cry. Okay, so I think we are getting to a little bit of a wrap up point. Is there any burning desires that anybody? Well, that wasn't a good way to put that. Is there anything anybody get <laughs> <laughs> a burning desire? <laughs> what would you want anybody that was watching tonight to leave here knowing about your band and um, about you uh, in general? Now, let me see. Let's say. What you guys? Whoever wants to go first, go ahead. Um, uh, well, we're gonna be on Nashville tomorrow night. <laughs> and Watch the TV. We're very tomorrow. excited to be on there because we're from Nashville, and um, I do actually think that's really cool. That uh, I, at first I was a little skeptical about there being a show about the town that I'm from, but what I've kind of seen is they're really using a lot of people from Nashville. You know, um, they're using mm -hmm. all music from Nashville. And um, it's been a really cool thing for the city, I think. And um, so we're excited to be a little tiny part of it. And uh, you know, hopefully we don't look like jackasses on there. And uh, I'll say, uh, if you guys are um, next Tuesday, if you're around College Station, Texas, or anywhere close around, we're actually going to be down there. You, you mentioned Whiskey Myers a little while ago, and we're, uh -huh. we're, playing, we're playing with them on Tuesday at College Station. Oh, so, cool! So yeah. If you're anywhere, anywhere in the Texas, uh, East Texas community, come party with us uh, Tuesday night. It'll be fun. Awesome. The, speaking of that, you said in, in Nashville, who's your favorite character on the TV show, and do you watch it? Um, I've seen two episodes. Kelby can probably answer this. Um, I like the brunette that is the chick that works at the publishing house because I like brunettes. Aha! Uh -huh. All right. Yeah. I, I mean, I love blondes too. I mean, sorry, Jessica. I like. <laughs> <laughs> I like Mrs. Taylor from Friday Night Lights, whatever her name is. Um, uh, Connie, Britton, Connie or Britton or yeah, Connie I, Britton. I think she's, Jude. Go ahead. She, uh, she's just my favorite. I would, I would marry her if she. I wasn't. think Jude is so pretty. <laughs> Judith Hogue. She plays the sister. They call her the Mouth of the South. 
one. Oh, yeah, oh that's right. Yeah. Is, she's mm -hmm. awesome, and I've spent time with her in Nashville, and she I, she can sing, too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm really impressed by that whole thing. It's it's really interesting, you know. And then the girl that we filmed with, Claire, um, is really awesome, and she's she's Australian, and she's got a crazy southern accent when she's on the show. It's wild. She, it's she, it was really weird taping because she would like half the time she would talk in her normal accent and half the time she would stay in character even in between takes and so she would be like super southern and then super Australian. That's weird. That's got to be strange for somebody like, you know is it weird too like when someone like Keith Urban sings? Like yes. You, yes. They, you don't hear the accent yeah, when they it's sing. Really, it's, it's bizarre. It's, I feel like the Australian accent is easy. To, it's like they're either all fooling us or they like it's just really easy to turn off because there's a there's a bunch of singers in Nashville right now that are from Australia that kind of sound just like Keith Urban. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> they all are kind of sounding like Keith Urban, you know, and whatever. Keith Urban, hi Keith. Um, so we have oh how sweet she says I've never watched Nashville before, but I'm gonna watch it tomorrow just to see you guys. Nashville, cool. you owe these guys. And then Jay Jolly says, hey, little bit of bud, little bit of whiskey. I like these guys. And then um, mm. if, oh, you're, I like your, can you guys come every week, Ambiance? If you ever get really famous, what crazy thing would you put on your show writer? No blue M&Ms? Uh, <laughs> no blue, no blue M&Ms. Um, we would put, um, what would we put? I don't know. My mind goes to food. <laughs> my mind always goes to food. Um, I don't know. What would we, what would we put? We would that? want, Kelby would want a motorcycle at every venue ready to go when we pulled up. That's exactly right. Um, <laughs> Jaron would want his own private bathroom. And <laughs> I would want, um, I don't know. I don't know what I want. Um, Connie Britton. <laughs> Connie Britton. Connie You're cute. Oh, my God. Well, I, I love that. <laughs> so is there any advice as we're wrapping up? Uh, what would you tell somebody? Because you're uh, a new artist or a younger artist or, you know, somebody's kids. What, what advice would you give to somebody who was just starting out in uh, music? Not even country, just music in general. Uh, just, write yeah. songs every day. Play your instrument every day. Have a lot of fun. Don't take yourself too seriously, and that's about it. <laughs> that's, that's good. There you go. That is good advice. You got to write that down. <laughs> well, now, we... it's on YouTube. now it's going to be on YouTube, so we're good. Yeah, I know. Oh, that's... <laughs> I'm going to say I'm going to save that clip and watch it every morning when I wake up to just remind myself. Yeah. Okay. So, and I and I would have believed that again. I am gullible with you guys. I don't know why. <laughs> like I just believe everything you say for some reason. We're just so honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's what you have these like honest yeah, faces. Honest faces. <laughs> but I can tell you probably are like you're a little bad boy, I bet. And you're you're being good right now, I'm sure. No, I'm, I'm, no, no, we're we're good. We're good, guys. We're good. Are you okay? All right, all right. Well, I hope Jaren's all right. And oh, thank you, Casey, for being here for your first CM chat. We appreciate you. Everybody mm -hmm. that's watching, make sure you're following at the Cadillac Black, and it's on their screen. And follow me too, just at the end. Keep coming back each week, and we'll have new artists, and I'll have these guys back again, and um, whenever they want, because they're every, funny. Every Monday, every Monday. I don't care. Jump <laughs> on with us. Like I have the Blue Steel girls on next week. That that I think one of them single. They were on um, uh, that show, The Voice. They were on okay. Team Blake, The Blue Steel. Do you, do you watch that show? I've only seen it once. Um, yeah, I'm not a big TV guy. Oh, okay. Well, David Watts says he Kelby Ray 420. What is that? <laughs> I have no idea. I have no idea what he's talking about. David Watts is bad. Like I, he redeemed himself, and he keeps like digging. Like digging. Well, and with that, I'll like take <laughs> us out of here. Thank you, Jay, and I'll be on with uh, Jay Jolly on Friday for It's a Friday Thing. And coming up December 12th, we're doing the end of the year country music review Untwangled, CM Chat Untwangled 2012. Thank you so much. I love you guys. You're the bestest. Cadillac you. Black, you are awesome. Thank you. Thanks, guys. <laughs>